what would a successful UN treaty uh, look like? A successful UN treaty would have ambitious goals on the one side, so it will clearly uh, put everyone in a common direction towards reducing plastic pollution to zero uh, uh, in the longer run. Uh, then it will have will be ambitious not only in the goal but also in the measures. And I think we've seen uh, uh, way too many global environmental agreements that are very ambitious in the goals, but not ambitious when it comes to the measures uh, to solving them. So, so it's really important that uh, uh, there's a clear link between the measures and the goals. That means that we uh, need global definitions, global standards for product, products and product design for material use, um, that we have uh, global regulations, bans on some products that uh, are unnecessary, um, and that this set of uh, rules and regulations are then supported by, um, by a, a proper institutional uh, framework around it, uh, with COPs, with uh, a scientific panel, and importantly with uh, uh, a financial mechanism that can support implementation of uh, these obligations in all countries. Um, so, I'm, I mean, I'm hearing um, establishing uh, global standards, uh, supporting, I guess, all countries to, to do this, like with, with tools, with knowledge. Um, and in a way as well, we also have to consider how this new economy would look like, right? And here is where the circular economy comes into play and, you know, asks you to look at the source of the problem instead of just dealing with it at the end. Um, in your opinion, what role does the circular economy play in that future vision that the UN treaty kind of wants to, to create uh, in the world? I think the circular economy plays a central role, uh, really. We need a global circular economy. That's why we need global laws, global regulations through a treaty. Um, and in order to stop the current situation, which is really just producing virgin plastics, uh, using it for a very short amount of time and, and creating a huge waste problem at, at the other end of that linear economy that we currently have, if we are to reach a goal uh, or get as close as we possibly can to the goal of zero plastic pollution, so that what, that's what we really have to, from the nature and environmental side, plastic doesn't disappear in the environment. So any plastic that we uh, release will stay there and accumulate. So we really, we have a finite planet. We really have to get to zero plastic pollution. And the only way then that we can still uh, use uh, plastics uh, in, for the areas where plastics is really needed is through a circular economy. So uh, I think it, there are important arguments for, for reduction, for reducing uh, production and consumption uh, of plastics and then create a true circular economy for, for what is then left um, in circulation. I mean, I think it's clear that, that the world uh, in many ways or that many parts of the society are supporting this uh, UN treaty with more than 2 million people. And well, you just told me that actually it's more than 900 civil society groups uh, from a, a huge new number of countries that are calling for governments to, to sign this global legally binding um, agreement to end plastic pollution. And we've also seen a clear push from the business and uh, financial sector with around t uh, 70 business and financial institutions also uh, signing a pre-UNEA um, statement asking governments to start negotiations for the UN treaty. Um, a lot of the the, the businesses, the uh, a lot of the businesses that we speak to, a lot of the businesses that are you know pushing for a circular economy for plastics, that are heavily in, you know in favor of getting the UN um, treaty, they have goals set for 2040, 2050, um, which seem a bit far away. You could almost like 
you know, say, well, what are your plans today? Uh, you know, how, uh, you know, it's very clear what, where you want to be in 2040 and 2050, and that sends a very clear message to, to people, but also how are you going to turn your ambitions into actions? Um, I just wanted to discuss this a little bit with you because you mentioned uh, measures and you mentioned tracking. Is that the, what we need more of? Do we need to, you know, have this kind of metric system that, you know, will hold them accountable? Or is there more to it that we need to be asking businesses to do? I think that's definitely one of the, uh, the measures that needs to be put in place. Today, plastic pollution isn't really uh, well measured, uh, neither at the business level, uh, nor at the country level, or global level. A lot of our understanding of plastic pollution and the levels of plastic pollution comes from uh, scientific estimates, research on how much plastic is in the ocean, etc. That really has to change. We need to start tackling plastic pollution as a, a concrete uh, uh, problem of emissions that we can actually quantify and that we should report on. Uh, a treaty will hopefully put in place a, a global reporting system and set some uh, global standards on 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 methods for reporting so that they can be comparable uh, across countries. Uh, so measuring really the plastic footprint and, and measuring the level of circularity also within the business uh, is key. I think it is a danger uh, when you see companies that only commit to something that is far into the future, very distant into the future and don't have a clear plan uh, and a clear way of measuring progress towards that goal. Um, so all those things need to be put in place. It's great to see that many businesses are making commitments, uh, uh, but then oh, we're looking even more forward to see them reporting in, uh, in approaching those commitments. 